Hey there, Hoopty fans. It's been a little while, but the weather's great today and I feel like making a video. I'm hanging out right now in the garage with the 911. We're gonna make a follow-up video to that one really soon, but today I got something special for you. I got something on the other side of this garage door that has been a dream for me to own since I was much, much younger. And I can tell you right now, if it was the early 2000s, I would definitely be like the coolest guy in town right now. Maybe it's not quite as cool as it was then, but I still think it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna open up this garage door and reveal my next project. But first of all, real quick, real quick, real quick, cue my intro. There she is. Actually, you know, we usually call our cars she. I'm not sure there's any sexual energy like a sports car in this thing. <laughs> so maybe we should say there he is. I don't know, maybe maybe I need to start making up a, a name for my vehicles like some people do, but this one definitely has a a very manly name if we come up with one. <laughs> so this is my 2007 Hummer H2 and it is glorious in its ridiculousness. Just do a quick walk around here and let you get an idea what it looks like. Whew. Look at that beautiful black paint and all those giant, giant pieces like a giant Mickey Mouse car. It really looks like something designed on a piece of construction paper by, I don't know, five, six, seven year old me. <laughs> it is ridiculously big. So we'll do a walk around here to just give you an idea of what kind of condition this thing's in. The coolest place to start, I think, on a Hummer is right up here on the grill. This is the grill that they had all the lawsuits over. If you're a Jeep person or a car enthusiast and you read car news, they kind of stole from Jeep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's kind of like the well-known recipe for you know the seven openings on the grill from a Jeep. I think I've heard before that Jeep did it because they've been on all seven continents, which at the time they started doing it was a really big deal. Most cars hadn't done that. Um, but anyway, that's a story that I'm not educated enough to tell you. So what, the best thing about this Hummer is it's very, very well taken care of. Uh, it doesn't have a bunch of rust. It doesn't have a bunch of dents. It doesn't have a bunch of scratches. I mean, it really, you know, I got this thing at the auction. It was super dirty. Uh, the back suspension was screwed up and had a flat tire. Uh, and I got it for a steal price. And we may talk about that later if I decide I want to disclose that. But I got it for a steal in my opinion. It has 130,000 miles. Uh, and I'll open up this giant engine bay and show you that beast in a few minutes. But it's um, one of the reasons I really like this vehicle is because the engine, uh, since I have people I have access to who can swap engines and work on engines and do things like that. The 130,000 miles doesn't scare me as much because this lead thing has an LS engine. I mean, it has the most basic engine on the planet. <laughs> it has a six liter Vortec, uh, which we'll open this thing up and I'll show it to you here in a minute. But let's just continue our walk around here. Uh, one thing I may do pretty quickly with this thing, anybody that knows me or watches this channel knows I hate Chrome guys. I don't know why. If I had a 50s or 60s car, maybe I'd be into chrome. Uh, if I was a Harley guy, maybe I'd be into chrome. However, I like the blacked out Harleys too. But this chrome piece, I don't know. 
even though it's a Hummer and chrome was such a big thing then, I feel like this chrome piece, this grill is gonna have to come off and get blacked out somehow. It's just, I don't know. Something about my opinion of vehicles and chrome, it really turns me off. And we're gonna get into something even worse here in a second as we walk around this thing. I'm gonna show you why you should not buy anything with chrome wheels. So anyway, it's got nice big driving lights down here. Do some walk around here. One thing I'm already looking at is possibly replacing all these lights. I think it would uh, give the vehicle a good update and make, you know, make it look a little more, uh, you know, up to date. If we got rid of these and replaced them with LEDs and something that was, you know, a little cleaner and clearer. But anyway, walking around here, the first major problem. Uh, well, really, probably the only major problem is going to be these wheels. Oh boy, these wheels. So I'm definitely going to have to buy a set of wheels, which I really hate to do because I love this Hummer look. And I've already, I've already been shopping online and there's probably, probably no chance I'm going to use these OEM wheels. They're just too hard to come by and it looks like a lot of them are in the same condition because of the age of these. Uh, and of course they've corroded and i gotta tell you folks if you're a fan of chrome wheels uh, you don't deal with old cars because chrome I, I don't know man it seems to do this much worse than a flat wheel and don't ask me why that is but i'll just walk around here and show you all these wheels look at that corrosion and that chrome coming off i mean one of these wheels was actually losing air i took it over to my friends at in and out tire another Clarksburg slash Glen Elk business um, over at In-N-Out Tire. They actually had to take the tire off. Uh, they grinded down the wheel because all the corrosion on the inside uh, and they put a bead lock and everything on it. But there's so much pitting on the inside of these wheels that they are just not safe and they're not going to last. So this is actually probably the best one. There's very little problem on this one. And this one right here is pretty bad see that corrosion and that's not that's not just um, cosmetic like I said it's actually on the inside of the wheel also uh, as far as rust on the rest of this thing just to give you an idea that's pretty much it so it has these it has two sets of steps it has this really ugly chrome low step and then it has a tall up high here like rock crawler like a protective step and that step is pretty rusty the top one now these bottom ones as ugly as they are they are fine but once again that's probably going to be something that gets de-chromed as i start making this my own on this side i think it's a little worse you can see corrosion right there it's been repainted but it's not bad compared to some of the hoopties i've had like the expedition that the end of that rock crawler right there very 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 rusty on the end uh, and i noticed back here on the back this added part that carries the spare tire which is a massive crazy contraption it's got some rust on it and actually we put this tire cover back on but i've already had it off and it has a pretty good bit of rust back there too so let me show you in the back of this thing <laughs> because it's so funny to open this. Uh, so you pull this pin out. That's a, that's a safety. Then we pop this. Now you see that started coming open pretty easy. Now folks, <laughs> this tire on this arm, uh, it really starts to give you an idea of how big this machine is when you feel just this thing. Cause I'm telling you, you know, it's on nice, uh, nice swivel here and it moves pretty easy but this thing weighs every bit of you know 60 to 100 pounds I mean it is just massively massively heavy but anyway open this up look in the back real quick not that there's anything real exciting in the back but so I don't really know what goes here I'm guessing it's a, another seat. I did not get that seat, unfortunately. Um, I may 
look around the internet and see if I can find one, especially if I decide to keep this thing, uh, which, you know, in, in the Keith automotive industry of vintage variety, I always tell people everything is for sale, but I'm so like little kid giddy about this Hummer that it may not be for sale. <laughs> I don't know if you want it that bad, make me an offer. But as of right now, gosh, man, this thing is so cool. I'm just not feeling it. I feel like this is mine. Uh, anyway, we'll finish our little look around here at the back and we'll move up to the next row. Okay, get this thing closed. It's massively heavy. And we shut this. Ugh. See, it actually shuts pretty easy. Like I said, everything moves pretty easy for how big it is. This, the little pin I think is funny because you see what it does here. If this, let me move my hand so you can see it. If this would happen to pop open when you were driving, it's just basically a little safety. It's a steel cable. Uh, but you have to imagine if you're going uh, 60 miles an hour down the road and that thing pops open and, you know, flies off, <laughs> it, would, it may kill somebody behind you. It really could. I mean, I don't know why I'm laughing just because it's so ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, this, this thing is definitely, I think, for a responsible driver because... I feel like it's a giant murder weapon. <laughs> if you're driving this thing fast and reckless uh, and you hit somebody in one of these great little electric cars that everybody loves so much, like, I don't know, you're gonna have to look for pieces of that electric car underneath this thing. I mean, you're gonna be picking it out like a uh, meat out of a dinosaur's teeth <laughs> in many literal and figurative ways. <laughs> so here's the back seat. Looking pretty cool back here. I mean, it's a nice big back seat. For as big as this thing is though, it really doesn't seem that crazy. And you see this, gosh, this come up really easy. And I mean, just under the seat and the floor, look how clean this thing is. For 2007, I mean, this thing was definitely somebody's baby. This is not just been an everyday driver that somebody has beat up and not cared about. This, this is somebody's baby, folks. Like I found uh, a gym here as far as the condition. See, it has these, I guess they're a little dated, but it has a DVD system back here in the back of the seats for the kiddos to watch or whoever's sitting in the back. You can see the one over on that seat and see this one. Pretty cool. I don't know how those work or where they're controlled. I have not really played with it yet. And then, well, you know what? This is probably where they're controlled right here because there's a volume and a place to plug in the headphones, which are actually up front in the center console. I'll show you those in a minute. And you see there's also controls back here for the back seats, which are also heated. One thing amazing about this thing is how old it is and uh, some of the, you know, technology that it has that has just become more standard on things. This thing's from 2007 and has things that, you know, I'm sure in 2007, I didn't even know we're in a vehicle. You got two cigarette lighter plugs back here, 12 volts. Nice big pockets. Nothing in those, unfortunately. The headliner's clean, which is a great thing because buying cars with dirty headliners, uh, I'd almost rather buy a car with an engine problem than a dirty headliner. It's almost impossible to get off. It's terrible. But anyway, go up here to the passenger side. Now, this is a... This is a mission and making a video because something over here is rattling. <laughs> I'm going to take this mat out because I don't like these mats. Just throw it there for the moment. Something is rattling here when I'm driving and it's driving me insane. See, everything's in good shape here. Uh, one thing not in good shape here, and it looks like somebody tried to glue it at some point. You see, this is loose. Uh, I guess it's broke off or something, I don't know, but it's the controls for the windows and the power locks. And actually, the you see the heated seat on this side is actually two pieces. I think it is on the driver's side too, obviously. If it is here, it probably is over there. So you got where it heats the whole thing, and then you got where it just heats the back, which is kind of cool, I guess. And I'm not sure why you would only want it partially heated, but that's an option if that's what you want. Power seat also on the passenger side glove box is giant 
feel like whatever is rattling is probably in here. I don't see anything. I don't know what is. Definitely have a rattle. Under the seat, maybe. I don't know. Don't know what's rattling, and I don't see what it could even be. Unless it's just this. It might just be this mess that I showed you with this thing broken. It may just be this tapping on itself as we're going down the road. There's a key here to turn the airbag off, passenger airbag. See, it has a giant sunroof, very large. I don't know if that comes across on video how big that sunroof actually is. Of course, it's nothing in comparison to some of the cars today that have the panoramic ones that go all the way back. But once again, if we're thinking in 2007 terms, that is a hell of a big sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll swing around to the driver's side and I'll start her up and show you some more stuff here. All right, now I'm in on the driver's side. I'll give you a look at the controls here. I'm going to be honest and tell you I don't even know what some of these do. So maybe we'll sit here and hit some buttons and test them. This button right here is an interesting one. It looks like a picture for the window up and down. Uh, but obviously we have window controls here. So we'll test that here in a second see what that is. Uh, power mirror controls. Now uh, this is driver memory where it actually, you know, moves the seat back when you get in and out, which is interesting with this thing too, because uh, I've never seen one before. Every time I turn it off, the seat like opens up <laughs> like the front uh, part of the bottom seat bottom goes down like, you know, like <laughs> and the back goes back. So it's like a clamshell. If you have your seat up and forward, it's like, oh, let's let you out. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, because the seat goes up a little bit, I guess maybe because it's such a ridiculous climb down out of here, which I look like a fat old person getting in and out of here, I need to uh, figure out the right, the right motion, exactly where to put my feet and when to turn my body to get in and out of here because it is very awkward because it's so high. Um, I'm sure I'm saying something that people with big trucks are used to, but I'm not used to it. <laughs> Let's look at some of the controls here. Um, this is obviously gonna be the back wiper. Lights, I'm not sure what this one does. I'll we'll have to look more into that. All right, so the light controls are here. You got automatic, which I love. I've gotten used to in cars. So I hate being able to, I hate having to turn my lights on. Okay, so let's start this thing up. I had the wipers on last night, sorry about that. Listen to that Vortec engine. As you see, mileage, I don't know if you can read that, 135, 688. And no warning lights, baby. It had a couple when we got it. Uh, it kept saying low oil pressure. Um, let me shut this door. It was saying low oil pressure, and it also had an issue that kept popping up on the back. Uh, these things have a compressor and they have air ride originally and it was popping up service air suspension but uh, we discovered when we started looking at the air suspension that it had been taken out a long time ago somebody had just deleted it uh, the compressor is not even there so my guy Taryn was able to get in there and just turn that off so that warning stopped popping off popping up I guess he found the information on how to do it online I'm not going to talk about simple things like the blinkers and stuff like that, but I guess that's the cruise. I'm not really sure how that works. And this thing, oh my god. Oh, that's the coolest thing ever. So this mystery button, <laughs> this mystery button that I didn't know what it did, it actually, let me try to get a good view here, it puts all the windows up and down at the same time. I mean, that is like a great baller idea. <laughs> for a baller that needs to put all his windows up or all his windows down at the same time you know if you're bumping your 15s in here <laughs> i always had i always had 10s in my car usually but uh, i don't think you can put 10s in a hummer you gotta put some 15s in here so if your 15s are bumping and you need to get those windows down fast right here baby one button you don't have to waste your time with the four buttons you just go straight to these buttons up here and you see i'll do it again watch 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 all the windows oh look at that i mean i feel like every car should have that that's such a great idea over here 
I guess I have to figure out this four-wheel drive system. So there's no option to take this thing out of four-wheel drive. Um, it has four high, four high lock, and four low lock. And I'm guessing this... Okay, I'm not going to pretend like I know. I'm guessing... I would think that would be to like lock it on permanently, but I would think that's what these would do too. Because uh, I'm guessing this is like an automatic where, you know, it can adjust the front and back. But I'm guessing this is like the transfer case or something, but... Okay, I'm not like a mechanic, so we'll have to figure that out. We have TC2, traction control 2. I don't know why it has the 2. I'm trying to see if it... Okay, it has a little light that blinks beside it. TC2. I, I would think it would turn the traction control on and off, but I don't know what the 2 is about. So I don't know. Then we got a trailer button. I guess if you're towing. And then down here, uh, this button has an up and down arrow. I'll let you see that. And a picture of the back wheel. Now, I'm just going to guess that that probably has something to do with the air suspension that I told you is deleted in the back. So I'm guessing that does nothing. Uh, you got four power, or I'm sorry, three power outlets right here, which is pretty cool. So you got a lot of access to power here. Uh, a regular, like every GM ever made at that time period, uh, climate control system. We got the OnStar thing here, which is super out of date. <laughs> I don't know if there's something else I could stick there, maybe a, a bank for lights or something like that, but I don't, I don't know. Do they even still have OnStar? I mean, it's so ridiculous at this point when everybody has cell phones. Uh, I don't know that it's really a, a needed thing like it was when they created it. I think it was a pretty good idea at one time. Uh, this radio, man, this is a great thing to talk about because it's hilarious. <laughs> it is, I'm pretty sure this radio was designed by Nintendo of America. <laughs> Just based on the graphics, it reminds me of a uh, NES or possibly a Super Nintendo. I don't know. It might be a 32-bit here. So the navigation, it says navigation, no map disk. That is a new thing because I had the navigation on the other day. And I really want to show you guys the navigation because it is hilarious. Uh, the navigation, I mean, it has no <laughs> no clarity whatsoever. It literally, literally, I don't know, it looks more like a fish finder <laughs> than something in an expensive car. It, I don't know why it's saying no disc. So that's a new problem. Also, I'll show you this giant center console. And you see in here there's a remote. And also two sets of headsets which plug in back there for the movie watchers and i don't really have a whole lot else to show you i mean it doesn't have anything crazy there's a there's controls up here for garage doors and uh, for the sunroof and buttons for these lights and the sunroof like i said it's pretty big for its age i mean it's you know just a plain sunroof just open straight back got a little bit visor on it nothing real crazy but all right folks we're back in the hummer it's a new day I decided i wanted to do a little quick drive around video nothing too heavy we'll probably make a video later on maybe taking this thing off road somewhere let me quickly put my seatbelt on here so we don't have to listen to this beeping so just give you a a quick talk about and walk around to the Hummer here. We've already went over some of the quirks and features, so I just really want to talk about how it drives. So my current daily driver is a Ford Expedition. Uh, so this is a pretty close comparison to that. They're right around the same age. Uh, this is no seven. My Expedition is no eight. It's kind of cool to be able to compare them now. I've had a couple of the big Ford products. I also had an Excursion that I sold about a year ago, um, which I loved. Shouldn't have sold it. Big mistake. Uh, but this thing is very comparable, both of those. But the first thing I'm going to say different between this thing and the Ford products I've had is this 6-liter V8 is unbelievable. It is so much better 
than the engine in my Expedition. Now the Excursion had a V10 and it was pretty darn impressive too, but this 6.0 V8, uh, I think it's called a Vortec V8, it just seems to have endless power. Now I haven't pushed it too hard. You know, this thing is, I feel like it would be called the murder weapon. <laughs> if you uh, ran over somebody in an electric car or something, I feel like you'd be on the uh, national news possibly about how reckless you were in this thing. I think uh, driving this thing definitely gets you more attention. It's like speeding in a supercar, you know. Uh, this is definitely something you want to be responsible for. Uh, very responsible uh, behavior when you're driving it. This thing's clocked to 120. I can't imagine this thing going 120 miles an hour. I'm not even sure I can imagine this thing going 100 miles an hour. Uh, it's probably like the perfect car for me to drive uh, daily and not get tickets and not get in trouble because it feels so like in command that I'm always a fast driver like it's hard for me to control I have to be really careful especially depending on the car I drive uh, when I get in those little Audis and stuff that I've been driving those two liter turbos you know it's just a little four cylinder but those cars get away from you man I mean you think you're going 60 and you're going 90 uh, not the case <laughs> with this Hummer when you get up to about 75 uh, you start to question whether or not you'd be able to stop it if somebody pulled out in front of you you know what I'm saying or like if a deer jumped in front of you, uh, you know, I wouldn't even try to like slam on the brakes or maneuver. I think I would just grit my teeth and go right through it. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't want to say that I think it's overly dangerous, uh, but it is, it's overly dangerous for other people. Uh, just a couple other things about how this thing drives. Like I said, lots of power. I don't know the top speed. I'll probably never find out. Uh, I'll probably never drive it over 80. Um, a couple things just reviewing the interior uh, for 2007 the interior is amazing it's much nicer than either of those Fords I had that I'm talking about um, the one thing I'm kind of weird about in this thing is the steering wheel I feel like I'm kind of slighted with the steering wheel for such a manly truck I feel like it should be a little thicker and a little wider and you know the crossbars here should be a little wider it should just be like I don't know a little more substantial I guess is the thing I'm looking for it should just be a little it should be a little beefier a little meatier you know what I mean um, other thing and this goes back to the size and the weight uh, it feels like it wanders around the road a little bit um, and I've had other cars like that I've had other cars like that sorry I'm letting somebody cross the road uh, the excursion was kind of like that too. The expedition is not like that. And that you never just hold the wheel straight and go down the road. You're more like a ship captain. <laughs> you see the old, uh, you know, pirate movies where the ship captain is up there. You know, he's going to the left and he's going to the right and he's always doing something or going just back and forth. Uh, it, it, it tends to wobble around, it seems like. Like it is always it doesn't seem like it goes straight it feels like it's wanting to wander to the left or to the right which is fine as long as you're paying attention uh reason number two this is like a really good car for me to drive in is i think for those of you like me that have a bad habit of playing with your phone when you're driving this will cure you of that very quickly because you will look down at your phone for like three seconds and be five feet to the left <laughs> i mean it's it is a, a machine that needs constant corrections pretty much I guess is the best way of putting it that I can think of it, it just and, and I don't even know that I mean that is a bad thing but it, it feels as substantial as it is I mean it's big and you don't want to be swerving around the road in this thing because it's so wide I mean it's not gonna be long before you hit something along the road or run into a car beside you or bump mirrors with somebody it's just a substantial, substantial vehicle, and you got to pay a lot of attention to it, basically. Uh, you know, there's rules with YouTube that I can't blast the stereo, but, you know, I was making fun of the stereo the other day. Uh, I don't want to get any copyright stuff, but I don't even know what this is, but 
Okay, we better not do that. I feel like I'm gonna get my video pulled. But the stereo in this thing is crazy. It is, especially for the age it is, it's all Bose, it's a complete Bose system. And it, I mean, it, you know, car stereos have gotten much better over the years anyway from the factory stock stereos. But this one, for the age it is especially, uh, it sounds like a Bose stereo. I mean, it is loud, it has lots of bass. Now, you know, I feel like this thing is a practice in ridiculousness and it doesn't have enough. Uh, so I got some, I got an old bandpass box sitting at my house with the amp mounted right on it and two tins that are uh, the old uh, Alpine, they're like aluminum cone tins and they hit so hard. <laughs> so my plan is to go ahead and wire that thing up and put it in here because I feel like it's a Hummer even though the stereo sounds amazing, it could use a little more bass, right? I mean, we are, uh, when you're practicing in excess, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> you know, we might as well, uh, we might as well be as ridiculous as we possibly can. And, you know, some people will think that I'm trying to show off or something, but it's, it's more of like a, a homage <laughs> to the, history and uh, classicness of this vehicle. So anyway, folks, I tried. I can't get the GPS to work. <laughs> it's really disappointing. I really wanted to show you how ridiculous it was. But anyway, thanks for watching my video today. I'm really excited to make the Hummer H2 into a project. It's probably uh, more than likely gonna be my daily driver. I really, really don't care about gas mileage. I don't travel that far and I don't put a lot of miles on a vehicle, so. Uh, this is probably what I'm going to drive to do things like run around town and also I'm a real estate agent also so I'll probably drive it to show houses. Uh, I may even put some advertising on it for my businesses. Anyway, thank you very much for watching Hoopty in the Hills and we got more videos coming really quick. I'm going to actually probably film more than one today and I may have a big flood of videos coming out in the next few days. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. Please tune in check out my videos uh, I promise I'm a little bit entertaining we'll do another one here real soon and we'll get this thing out on the road and uh, maybe even take it off road I got a new little miniature DJI mini 3 drone uh, we're gonna do some cool new videos I got some cool ideas but anyway uh, we might get this thing in some mud who knows <laughs> it's so clean and such a pristine condition I almost hate to do that but it's a freaking Hummer Let's do it, bro. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see. We'll see you later. We'll make some cool videos and uh, tune back in and see what kind of crazy stuff I'm up to. Thank you very much for watching.